finished graduate school in about, uh, gosh, 2009. So just to give people a historical context. And when I was in school studying psychology and studying, you know, counseling, the, the way we were being educated about gender issues was very different than what training or counselors and training are experiencing now. OK, so like when I was in school, I was very oriented towards uh, sociology and feminism. And I was really interested in like what at the time was mostly like gay and lesbian identity development. And so I kind of had my um, interest piqued by topics like that. And I remember being in school and learning about what was then called gender identity disorder. And I didn't give it too much thought. I, th I thought to myself, you know, basically what textbooks told us, which is that sometimes children have this really profound sense that they were supposed to have been the other sex. And I had a lot of compassion for that. I thought, oh my God, like, can you imagine growing up literally thinking you're supposed to be a boy or whatever, which you know very well because you did, yeah. right? And at the time, all I really thought was, it's so great that medical technology exists that can help such people experience more congruence and live their life. I didn't know anything about the kind of shady business within gender medicine. I didn't know about all of the poor outcomes that are not reported. I knew very, very little and I didn't give it much thought, but I had a great deal of compassion for anyone who struggled with gender dysphoria or gender identity issues. But I also, like I said, was interested in feminism and sociology. And so I was kind of weary about the way stereotypes played into this concept of like trans, right? And then if you fast forward, I worked in the world of autism for a long time. I worked with kids who have autism. I worked with adults with intellectual disabilities. And I worked with survivors of sexual abuse and domestic violence. Then I worked in a middle school. I was a middle school counselor there. And this was around 2014, 2015. And I started to have this kind of parallel process happening whereby within the campus, I was leading our school's first GSA, Gay Straight Alliance, and I was hearing kids talk about identity with a lot of Tumblr speak, which I, in hindsight I now know. Like they had all this language and these kind of de definitions and descriptions and these like gender bracelets and they were playing with identity in a way that was totally new that was unfamiliar and I noticed like they were also sometimes confused about like what it means to feel like a girl or feel like a guy and at the same time I started noticing like magazine covers in National Geographic with like a transgender child on the cover and like all this talk about the trans child which was really interesting. So I'm watching all this go down and I start kind of going down the rabbit hole online like many people do, seeing parents reporting, my daughter out of the blue came out, it sounded like a script and she and three of her best friends all think they're trans. And like at that point I thought, Okay, there's nothing completely crazy about this because teenagers often do take on the same behaviors and interests and identity exploration as their friends. Like, that's not the crazy part. The crazy part is that these parents were taking kids to their therapist or a doctor or a mental health professional, and they were suggesting that they affirm the identity and then proceed to medical steps. And that was the part that really blew my mind. So I'm watching all this happen. I'm witnessing this confusion in some of the kids I work with. And then a girl that I knew very well, I had worked with her for a couple of years, started saying she's not a girl anymore and that she wants a binder. And so long story short, after working incredibly carefully with her, her gender issues kind of went away. She started developing more friends at school. And she, in hindsight, I was able to talk to her like the next year or something she said, you know, I think I was just lonely and like online I made all these friends that were really talking a lot about gender. But now that I have some real life friends, I, I don't think that was really me. So at that moment, I thought, okay, these parents have a need. I think I understand what's going on because I had really become obsessed with this topic by then. And I think people are just misinformed, misunderstanding. And like all I have to do is set up a practice <laughs> and be reasonable, just be a normal therapist and write some articles and help other therapists who might be confused to like understand what's going on. And I think I can make an impact here. <laughs> and that was totally naive. Uh, 
I know, it's fabulous. And did you think, God, uh, will I have enough business? And d- was that on your mind? Well, what what ended up happening is I started by kind of writing some articles. And I think I was interviewed in like Fourth Wave Now or something. And I started seeing a couple of clients in the evenings while I was still working at the school. Okay. And after basically just putting myself out there as a person that exists... I got completely flooded and inundated with emails, phone calls, crying voicemails from parents who were just absolutely terrified. Uh. And so I I almost felt, I mean, I felt afraid of diving into something that I really don't know if I was equipped for. And I don't mean in terms of my therapeutic skills, but just like as a a business like I had no idea how to deal with this volume of intensity and contact and people reaching out this was all new so that's kind of how things got started and then after that school year a side story is that within our school district we had 13 schools yeah and of course thousands of kids on campus and out of all the schools there were four kids questioning their gender and this was a charter school where families had pretty serious other kinds of issues there was like generational poverty and trauma and drug abuse and all these things and our our um therapy manager she was in charge of all the therapists across campuses started rolling out these like trainings about trans kids which I thought proportionally was strange given how many more complicated and pressing issues our population faced. And I was having regular meetings with her, showing her the data that I was, I was reading Zucker, I was reading Blanchard, I was reading all these things and trying to understand. And I was looking at the the UK data about the 4,000% and like all of these detransition stories that were trickling in at the time. This is like 2015, right? And the way my manager, she was a very intelligent woman and she was a fantastic um, leader. But what she said to me was, Sasha, you know what? The pace of change with all these LGBT labels and definitions, it's just so rapid and fast that honestly, I can't even keep up. So I think that's why we need to just leave this to the professionals. And I realized unless I become a professional within the world of gender, I am not going to be given any credence about this information. So I I realized at that point that like, I actually have to become an authority figure in this world for people to take this seriously. (laughs) 